Thank you. That was nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank, Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Thank you guys. Um, 4.0, are there any adjustments to tonight's agenda? Just one, 8.2 is actually a middle school grant award rather than a donation, so there won't be any action that needs to be taken, but I'd still like to share that with the board. Great, so that it. 5.0, is there any public comment on tonight's agenda items? Okay. Seeing none. 6.0, the superintendent search update. Thank you for giving us a few extra minutes as we wrapped up the work session. Um, we have finished the first two phases of the superintendent search process. Um, we're pleased to say that we're bringing forward five candidates for interviews. Um, lots of great work by the board and the community members, the staff who have been involved. Thank you for the countless hours in reviewing all of the applications and helping in that scoring process. Um, and looking forward to the next updates. 7.0, Eight Corners Facilities Project Timeline. Sure. Um, welcome, everybody, and thank you. This is a very informal uh, update and kind of a pseudo proposal that we're going to be bringing forward. It's not pseudo, it will be a proposal that we're going to bring forward to the town council um, addressing specifically some of our schools. Um, as you've heard at previous meetings, we are calling our modular slash portable classrooms trailers now because that is what they are. So I'm trying to be very consistent with my terminology. And that's why this is called the Eight Corners Trailer Proposal. Um, and so I'm just going to split this presentation with fellow board members, April and Sarah. Um, and so I will start by giving a little bit of an overview of what we're asking for. And so this is what it comes down to. Um, to be online, hopefully sometime during the 1920 school year, we're asking for one trailer that has two classrooms. And some of this terminology has been a little bit choppy and we've actually confused ourselves at times. And so each trailer that we bring in actually has two classrooms in it. This is not really what it would be. I just kind of tried to look for a nice picture of a trailer classroom that I could just remind people what they are for those that don't see them every day. So that's kind of taken from Google, to be completely honest. Um, and so we would be asking for site prep for two trailers, only installing one up front, um, but then hopefully having two. And also a connector to the trailers, obviously, or so our students can be safe when leaving the permanent structure or the existing trailer classrooms to migrate into the new potential trailers. Uh, the estimated cost for this is $260,000, and that breaks down just as it's listed right there. Um, $50,000 for an asphalt for the asphalt site work. That's the pad that the trailers would sit on. Uh, $30,000 plus or minus, that is an estimate for the heated connector. Um, uh, $160,000 for the trailer itself, which contains two classrooms, and then $20,000 uh, just for finishing out utilities uh, and, and all the connections that, that make it a, a usable, teachable space. The idea for this, just as an executive summary, is that we would fund this through the school impact fees that are collected to, off, to mitigate the impact of development that our town has on our schools. And so uh, I just wanted to present a little bit of history of how do we get there. And this could be a much more comprehensive discussion, but I decided to keep us relegated to two years. Uh, and so going back to uh, kind of the last big presentation of the master plan, which is November of 2017, the data in that presentation, it actually is available on the website, I believe, right, mm -hmm. um, suggested that the data itself suggested that a, a consolidated primary school would be less expensive to build, to maintain, to operate, to expand in the future. We know there are some limitations on the three primary school sites that we have now. However, what's really important, and I've said this before, but I wanted to say it again, is that in addition to this quantitative information, there's the qualitative information and, and the affection and the attachment and the tradition that we have attached to the schools that we do have. And so that has to weigh into this conversation as well. And so when those two things, as I understand it, met uh, in the discussion, it wound up kind of stalling the discussion in November of 2017. And so, however, the issues that were behind that discussion, the growing enrollment, <coughs> the birth rates have continued to flourish. And so the problem has continued to catch up with us as time has rolled on. Um, so that just kind of brings us to where we are today. Um, and I'll turn it over to April to talk about why now and some of the data we have. So 
We all were presented to by um, Rebecca Wendell, and she did the very comprehensive enrollment um, study, the forecast that we use when Julie, <coughs> excuse me, presents the enrollment update at the first business meeting of the month. We've been able to really clearly track um, whether or not our estimates and predictions have been, you know, on or above. And for the most part, we've been, you know, targeting slightly over in some cases. Um, our enrollment for last year at Blue Point was 227. Our enrollment this year is 227. It was forecasted to be 223. Um, and so we have four additional students um, than the model originally projected. Uh, for Do you the mean eight corners, April? Sorry, am I saying Blue Point? Yeah. You did. Sorry. Okay. We know what you mean. <laughs> I didn't even know. Just Blue Point. That's, where, okay. that's Wine School. Um, so for the 2019-2020 forecast, the range, because again, Rebecca, remember, Rebecca presented the different models that we could use. And so what we give you here is the range. Um, so the forecasted number of students is anywhere from 248 to 254, um, which is an additional 21 to 27 students coming at eight corners. Um, we already know, based on the pre-kindergarten um, registrations that we have 78 kindergartners that are currently registered that's not obviously that's not at eight corners that's district-wide um, no that's at eight corners that's just at eight corners that's just at eight corners yes I apologize it's okay um, of course it is <laughs> 227 um, and of those 78 um, incoming kindergartners at eight corners we know that 17 of those students are going to require special services that means that they have been pre-identified um, before even coming into our schools we know that they're going to have identified special needs um, we also know based on previous years registration that after we close our kindergarten registration we see an increase and anywhere from 10 to 15 percent um, in the number of kids that are registered and so we can expect anywhere from 8 to 12 additional students in addition to the 78 we have now uh, what we are looking to do this is the same site map that Todd showed us um, at our overview presentation a few weeks ago what we are looking to do is add one additional trailer which is the trailer closest, thank you Nick, which is the tra trailer closest to the school building, labeled P1. Um, in addition to asking for the trailer, what we are also asking for is the, con uh, the grab, uh, what do we decide asphalt. on? Asphalt pad mm -hmm. that will um, accommodate two trailers. Um, in ter with talking with Todd and the planning process for looking at what we're going to need down the line um, it doesn't make any sense to only build a pad for one trailer um, if we are expecting that we could potentially need a second trailer there and so what we're asking for is the pad for two trailers and then the addition of that one trailer which will have two classrooms um, we are a little bit behind the ball in our ask and we understand that this is an out of budget cycle request um, based on the enrollment data that we have, which is why we're giving you this presentation now. Um, this is an imminent ask now. Um, and so if we, after we present to the town council, um, Todd will be able to put the order in for the single trailer and it should be ready um, by late fall of 2019. So we already know that this is not going to be fully up and ready um, for the kids when they start in September. Um, and then, based on this site plan and the um, preparatory work that will have been done, we know that a second trailer can be added, which is an additional two classrooms, which could be ready for um, um, September of 2020, um, if the current enrollment projections um, dictate that we'll need that. Uh, so how are we going to pay for this? So Nick alluded to this um, at the beginning in his opening statement when he mentioned the impact fees. Uh, so the impact fee ordinance is something that was put in place by the town council back in 2002. Um, it's actually a, a fund that we've never, as, as, as far as Julie's concerned, we've never actually accessed before. Um, and the purpose of it is, is really to um, have a, a 
fees associated with development that will put a strain on the demands of the municipality. And so making sure that um, we're imposing fees on the developers or um, individuals who actually take or, or a development company or an individual who builds a home um, so that we can support whatever growth or development we'll need in our municipality structure, i.e. schools. Um, so given that the fund is there, uh, we feel that it's fiscally responsible to access it. Um, as April said, this is out of budget cycle. Um, it is still a capital improvement project, mm -hmm. um, which means that it needs um, approval from town council. Um, so Nick, if you go to the next slide, this outlines uh, our time frame. So super small and I can't read that. Uh, so the first order of business was to share with you guys. So there is no vote or action required from the board. Um, this is, you know, really informational. Obviously, we want your support, your feedback. Um, the next step is next week. We'll be presenting to the town council finance committee, and hopefully get their support. Um, and then the final would go to a vote on Wednesday, April third, at the town council meeting um, for approval. And if it's approved. The next day, Todd, as I understand it, Todd can go ahead and order them. The, the only thing I would add to that, uh, we've never accessed the funds in an emergent way in the way that we're requesting before. Typically, the way those school impact funds have been utilized is to pay down debt service. Yep. Yep. And the only thing I'll, I'll add to that is, um, that I might have missed on the last slide, is an alternative alternative funding sources. So if we didn't use the school impact fees, um, it would go into our capital improvement budget, which would get approved by town council, our FY20 capital improvement pro uh, budget, which would get approved by town council at the second reading in May. So that's about a month's difference. It's actually late May, so almost two months difference in terms of time frame. last one that's it <laughs> so one thing I do want to add um, just in terms of our rationale and why we're using the student imp um, student impact fee is um, one of town council's goals as Julie pointed out um, is to allocate more and bond less and so we know that these impact fees are sitting in the account and that they're available to us um, and so this is an opportunity for us to help um, you know Town Council adhere to their goals um, to access money that we that we have. I have two questions. Hillary has one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that is very unusual, but I did actually raise my hand. Um, so, I, just quickly, has the has the kindergarten registration period ended yet? No, we register students right up till the first day of school. Um, but we have early registration going on now, and as April stated, we currently have as many students already pre-registered um, as we have currently enrolled. And so okay. the parent information night is coming up. I can't remember the date off the top of my head, but we, I think April it's at the end of this, in okay. April. It's the 23rd. So I guess April my 23rd. biggest question is that if we already have 70, I mean, that's five kindergarten classrooms, possibly six. Where are those children going to go in September and October? So this is a conversation that Long Range Planning had. Um, Joanne says it better than anybody. Um, we always make do. And so for me, this felt like a total crisis situation where I'm thinking to myself, how on earth are they going to go without this trailer come 1st of September? Mm -hmm. um, and Joanne pointed out that there have been larger projects. There's been mitigation at, went, at the Wentworth School, at the old Wentworth School, that there have been times when we have made it work. And so unfortunately, if this is a situation where they would have to convert the art room or the music room into a classroom temporarily, or both, or both mm -hmm. um, and put music and art on a cart, um, that could be a, p a possible solution. And certainly, um, Ann Lovejoy has um, pre-thought about some of those things and, and what we'll have to do. I have more, but you can go if you want to. All right. Okay. I was going to say, you asked one of mine. Oh. Um, but in addition to what Hillary's asking for with the contingency plan, would we be adding new staff into the budget to support the additional classrooms at Eight Corners? Absolutely. Okay. And that's based on having the approvals? Correct. 
so we'll have it. We'll need the staff regardless if we have the space. It's a matter of retrofitting the space once we, the kids are coming, so we don't really have a choice. Um, with yeah. respect to the students with special needs, will, will we be able to accommodate them in those modified um, rooms? Um, it, it, those the the trailer classrooms would would likely not be special education classrooms. Um, those students, special education students, would likely be housed inside the building. But that's all dependent on timing and quality of the space. It wasn't about. I didn't phrase it well. I apologize. Sure. Um, if we're trying to accommodate for them for two to, for a couple of months until the trailers are ready, are we able to support their needs within the building as we're trying to fit in the extra classrooms. So that's part of the assessment that will have to take place. We're trying to put our energy toward getting the space that we need um, and working through the timeline. And then once we better know who all of the students are and what all of their specific needs are, because those are 17 students that we know of, there could be mm -hmm. more than that, um, then we'll have to do some really thoughtful analysis and assessment of the space available and uh, you know, obviously pri prioritizing student severe student needs mm -hmm. first, if that makes sense. So I'm just wondering, and I don't, you probably know this, and this may be a town council question, but so are, so I, I've heard in the word, the term impact fees before. Is there a specific impact fee that is for the schools? So there is a school impact fee, which yes. is separate from the, I yes. don't know what other, whatever yes. else there is. Okay, and then my last question is, are the, is the $160,000 to buy the trailer or to rent it? Because I remember you had said that there were an op there were two options there. Good question. It's purchase. Okay. The lease option didn't work out for what we needed to do. Okay. I have a question. Um, so when you talked about the master plan 2017, mm -hmm. you were talking about how, like the pros of the consolidated mm -hmm. school, that we had talked about that in the past and mm -hmm. just like, when it comes time for us to like build a new school, what's are we gonna go with the neighborhood or consolidate? Has this has the board just like chosen that they're gonna recommend a consolidated school versus a community school? Or are you just saying that because that's yeah that that choice is not made yet. Okay, um, and it definitely requires more community involvement. And I think one of the things about this plan that makes sense for the unanswered question that you're bringing up is that putting one trailer in place now to meet our immediate need, immediate need rather than building two or proposing a more permanent structure is precisely because we really don't know what we're going to do yet long term with these primary schools. And there's so many things to weigh and it's a very sensitive conversation that has to be had but in a very thoughtful purposeful way that to address our immediate need the trailer classrooms were the best approach. So no it hasn't been decided yet. And the other thing I would add to that, so in November 2017, if you were to look back at the minutes, you'll see that the board really narrowed it down. We had multiple options, A through F in that big plan, A through H, I think, in that big plan. And they really narrowed it down to, I think, option A, which was do nothing, option B, and option F. Um, and the one that they liked the most at that time was a consolidated school. Um, but chose to not take any immediate action because we were also in the process of waiting to hear back from the Department of, of Education about our rating cycle application, which we submitted for four of our schools, um, all primary schools and the middle school. And we found out our standings um, in June of 2018. Mm -hmm. At the time then, you know, we had just our four board members. And so really, I think our timeline has been as um, aggressive as it could be given all of the transitions and things that have been going on. And when we did get our rating cycle applications, Eight Corners was actually the highest rated of our four schools, um, but it still landed number 34 on the list of 71. I believe at the end it was 71 schools total. So the likelihood of us receiving state funding to um, right size our schools or renovate our schools to meet the needs of our students and our programming um, is not something that's going to be achievable for us, so it is going to depend on the will of the local taxpayers to make that make any improvements happen. I just can I just make a, a comment. I, I I know I said this at the workshop, but I I want to just reiterate that um, 
the earlier we can start having our discussions about what's the best path forward, rather whether it's a consolidated school or whether it's to keep the primary schools, it's going to be such an emotional decision for the community that I think getting ahead of it and making a plan, having a strategic plan to be able to discuss that with the community is very important. Yep. And that's definitely on long range planning's immediate. It's the very next agenda item. Awesome. Yep. Thank you. And just speaking to that, have you made any decisions about how you plan to move forward in those discussions? So my initial plan for our for this month's long range planning committee meeting was to have basically dedicate the entire meeting to a discussion of what the Wentworth process was and then what do building committees or a single building committee for the issues that we have look like and fleshing those out so that a group could start really having these conversations. But this eight corners issue really came back to the surface and we knew we had to dedicate this time because every week that goes by is one more week it's going to take us to get that trailer in place. So it got bumped out a month, but it's right next in line. Assuming nothing else comes up, let's hope not. That was actually my question, but I have another question. So, um, our, I mean, I know Eight Corners is overcrowded and that this is the, obviously the top priority, but are we looking at a similar project that's going to need to happen at Pleasant Hill and Blue Point? And if so, what is the time frame on that? One of the challenges, the only thing I'll say about it is that one of the challenges with that is that Eight Corners is the site that has the most amenability to doing this type of project. The other two sites are even more restrictive in the geography that we have to be able to do something like this, which okay. of course weighs heavy on the very topic that you're bringing up, and, and yeah. I think I'm getting that right. Yeah. Yeah. There, so does there's that room for our kids will be at eight, like districted we, eight we may have to redistrict. That would be something that we would have to talk about. It, it would all depend on where our enrollment came from. Okay. Um, we talked about the fact that uh, an additional trailer at Blue Point would be where the upper playground is, right. um, which is, you know, not great for a lot of reasons. Um, and then at Pleasant Hill, they utilize um, the small parking lot um, that has been the site of a trailer in the past. And other than that, like, that lot is very, very small and there's not room for growth. So. And parking is a challenge already already at all of those at all the schools um, the other thing I would add is that there are two classrooms that could that are available at Blue Point one is currently used as storage and one is used as a safe space that could be converted back into classrooms um, and there is one classroom at Pleasant Hill that's currently um, used in another way that could be converted back to a classroom you know all of those things have trade-offs they all have implications and the principals are um, thinking and assessing all of those things as we go good okay. any other questions thank you this was an excellent presentation thank you guys um, thank you great job 8.0 new business 8.1 appointments 8.1.1 Middle School Unified Club Advisors. So as um, April and Amy know, we've started our Unified Basketball Program at the Middle School. Uh, the recommendation is to appoint Scott Weymouth and Hillary Ventura as the Unified Club Advisors um, that would be funded through the General Fund. Can you just describe what that means and what will be happening? what Unified Basketball is. Yes. So Unified Basketball is an opportunity for students who um, are typically developing and students who have identified um, special education needs to play together in a basketball game against other Unified teams from other districts. So our first game was the other day um, and we played against Yarmouth. And um, the way that it works is that there's on each team on the court at any one time, there's you know typically there, there's two general education students and three um, students who have IEPs and they play together um, and in a way that is um, highly accessible for all students and something that they might not have access to with our competitive um, middle school and high school sports. I just want to just say it was such a wonderful experience to go and watch the first game. Um, I, I did wonder, like, I know that I think Diane mentioned when she was chatting with me that this um, will continue up at the high school level, like that's the plan to kind of extend it. Yeah. Um, so is that something that is not in the budget for next year or is that something that's going to be the year after? 
So um, this kind of gets into a little oh, bit of 8.2, but I would, and Diane and Dave, feel free to step up to the mic and add to what I'm saying. Um, this is really to their hard work in bringing this to Scarborough. They recently received a grant in the amount of $2,000 at the middle school from the Special Olympics of Maine for the purpose of starting this unified club. Um, there's been some parent donations to buy t-shirts and they're utilizing uniforms that we currently have at the middle school. Uh, our hope is that next year we'll be able to apply for the grant again and be able to continue. And also the coaches are, um, or the advisors are doing this, you know, for a very small stipend comparative to the cost of um, our traditional coaches. Right. And so just to add a little bit to what Julie's saying, so Unified Basketball is a piece of our Unified Club. So right now um, our Unified Club is engaged in basketball with other Unified Clubs. Um, prior to this year, there was just one middle school in the state that was... Um, that had a unified club and they were basically playing against each other and that was somewhere that I used to be employed and so I was really excited about um, the idea of bringing unified here to Scarborough and the Special Olympics of Maine is really promoting middle school involvement there's a strong unified programming across high schools in the state um, and so these grants were available this year, and so when they reached out to us, we really jumped on that opportunity. Um, so our kids are playing in three basketball events this year. They played last Thursday. They played an away game today, which was super exciting, right? Because they went to Massa Basic, and I can't wait to hear how they went because I was here for something else. Um, and then next week, they had next Thursday, they'll play their final home game. Um, but then their work as a unified club will continue, mm -hmm. and they're really going to work to promote inclusive activities among our whole school community to raise awareness. And so we're super excited. It was just goosebump worthy last week if you had the opportunity to be at the game. Um, and we have so many students. I think we had. We have over 30, 30 yeah, students who yeah. are part of our unified club. And so it's just, I think, is going to add a lot to the culture of our school. Yep. And the stands were full. They were. They were. They were. <laughs> I yeah. love that it's a club mm -hmm. and that it's not just isolated to athletics, that it's right. really an opportunity to really build that culture. Yeah, and That's I think great. even when we started it, there were some students who were like, yeah, I'll join, but I don't know if I'm going to do that basketball piece. And again, amazing to see that the students really stepped up and kind of broke out of that um, and are developing some good confidence. And our peer buddies are doing a great job supporting that. Thank you. I, I missed it. I really wanted to yeah. go. I, Come I, next week. Oh, when is it? On Thursday. Thursday? At 3.30. Thank you. Against Bonnie Eagle. That's right. Oh. <laughs> Not that, like, I have a stake in the game. But. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is there any way to get it recorded to put on the television that we have for the town? For, like, anybody who doesn't get a chance to attend? Mm -hmm. Or some way to stream it? We could think about that. We can find it. Yeah. 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 Good idea. That would be a neat idea. Live streaming on Facebook. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> on my phone. Okay. People would be super excited <laughs> if we can pull that off. It wasn't. Okay. Um, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you for your leadership. Can I have a motion to accept um, the recommendation for the middle school unified club advisors? So moved. Second. Second. Okay. All those in favor? It's unanimous. 8.2 is covered. Um, 8.3, the Wentworth School Anonymous Donation. Yes, so I recently had the uh, great surprise of getting a memo from Kelly Crosby, our principal at Wentworth School, announcing that they received a $4,000 donation from a donor who wishes to remain anonymous. The donation has been made for the specific purpose of supporting the Wentworth School Garden, which is right out front um, adjacent to the playground if you've had a chance to see that. This year they're going to pilot a position funded by donations to expand the availability of the garden as a learning lab. 
The position would be two days per week during the growing season, and this would also allow the garden manager half a day each week um, to be available for um, each of the four learning communities at the Wentworth School. Um, and the, it, the integration of the curriculum would be facilitated by Katherine Hewitt, who is a currently an employee um, and really heading up the garden efforts at Wentworth School. Most academic su subjects at Wentworth have had opportunities um, to experience hands-on learning and to connect with their environment and community, and having the ability to fund this position will enable more experience to more students to experience that wonderful connection. There's even like a little outdoor kitchen there. Um, if you haven't had a chance to check it out, it's always different every time you go and constantly evolving. They've had, um, in the past, some of our professional learning teams have done cross-phase level projects um, with some of the CTE students and centers to create art for the garden as well. So um, every time you go, there's something exciting and new to see. So we just want to thank our anonymous donor for this very generous donation, and I would ask that the board um, accept this donation. So moved. Second. Thank you to um, whoever that was. That is incredibly generous. Thank yes. you. All those in favor? Okay. Unanimous. Okay. I'm going to bundle 8.4, which is the meeting minutes of February 7th, 2019. 8.5, the meeting minutes of the special meeting from February 27th. 8.6, meeting minutes, the workshop for February 28th. And 8.7, meeting, minute, meeting minutes for the business portion of February 28th, 2019. Can I have a motion to accept? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous? I would just add one comment and thanking Kelly Johnson for hustling through getting all these meeting minutes yes. ready for us. I don't know how she does it in the midst of everything else that she does, but she does watch back every single meeting. Lucky her. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure that they're nice and accurate. So thank you, Kelly. Thank you, thank Kelly. Kelly. Um, I was thinking, I don't know how you were doing it. Otherwise, I didn't stop to think about having to watch it again. So thank you. She <laughs> went through. <laughs> uh -huh. All right, 9.0, a motion to adjourn to executive session pursuant to MRSA 4056 for the purpose of legal counsel for the board not to return to public session. So moved. Second. All those in favor? It's unanimous. And 10.0, motion to adjourn to executive session pursuant to MRSA 4056 for the purpose of discussing contract negotiations not to return to public session. So, so moved. moved. All those in favor? It's unanimous. And we will adjourn from upstairs. Thank you. And again, thank you to the boys from 10-11. Yes, thank you, boys. Thank you.